Good day, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, I want to ask you something important. Are you caught up in the latest trends? We live in a world where trends dominate everything. Fashion, entertainment, even the way people talk about politics. Social media is filled with what's trending, and influencers and celebrities are always chasing the next big thing. Being trendy might seem like a good thing, but it's a fleeting compliment because trends change faster than we can keep up with. But here's the danger. This obsession with trends isn't just harmless fun. It seeps into every part of our lives, including our faith. The real danger lies in spiritual trends that, in many cases, are driven by forces that lead us away from the truth. These trends can twist the message of the gospel, watering it down, or even lead us into outright deception. Evil can disguise itself in these trends, making them appear appealing and harmless, but they can pull us further from God and closer to the world's fleeting desires. Be cautious, for not everything popular is good, and not every trend is worth following. There's a growing trend to water down the gospel, trying to make it more appealing to today's society. In our world, where tolerance is highly valued, some think that to attract people to Jesus, the gospel must appear more tolerant too. As modern culture becomes more skeptical and dismissive of religion, especially Christianity, many are tempted to alter the gospel rather than let its true power transform hearts and minds. With the increasing hostility toward scripture and faith, some within the broader Christian community have attempted to soften the Bible's message, reinterpreting or even retranslating it to fit a more modern, tolerant perspective. This approach risks losing the gospel's true essence in an effort to make it more acceptable. On the surface, efforts to engage people in faith through modern means might seem successful. They often spark conversations and draw interest from those who had little or no interest in Christianity before. But is this true success? Take, for example, the trend of sharing Bible stories on social media in a style that appeals to younger audiences. These channels have gained significant popularity, attracting countless followers and millions of views. The stories, told in casual and modern slang, have been both criticized and praised. Supporters argue that this approach reaches people who might never pick up a traditional Bible. It seems like a positive outcome, right? However, the real issue is deeper. If we change the Bible to make it more appealing, are we truly leading people to the Bible or just to a version of it that fits their preferences? The danger here is that many modern trends aim to make Christianity more popular and easier to digest, but in doing so, they strip away its true power, the gospel itself. Many praise these social media Bible stories for their humor, filling the comments with laughing emojis. But translating the New Testament has never been about making it funny. When the profound moment of Gabriel announcing Jesus' birth to Mary is turned into lighthearted banter, something vital is lost. This isn't just a translation issue. It risks trivializing the core of the Christian message. As the Apostle Paul warned, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear, 2 Timothy 4 verse 3. We must be cautious not to let entertainment overshadow the truth of the gospel. Many today engage with modern Bible versions, not out of reverence for Jesus, but for entertainment. This raises a serious concern. While these versions spark discussions about Jesus, are they conveying the true message? Seems doubtful. Comments often reveal that readers, though not religious, enjoy the content for its fun and appeal. Some even suggest they'd attend church if these versions were used. This shift is alarming, as it changes the focus from the gospel transforming lives to altering the gospel to fit modern lifestyles. Such trends risk falling into blasphemy and sacrilege, offering no true saving power. These modernized Bibles may appear harmless, but they are similar to other attempts to alter scripture. For instance, there are reports of a new Bible translation in China, approved by the government, that aims to align the text with communist principles. There are even rumors that Confucian and Buddhist ideas might be included. Whether these rumors are true or not, the mere thought is alarming. 
We clearly see the problem with changing the Bible to fit specific ideologies like communism or Buddhism. It transforms the Bible into something other than the Word of God. But the same holds true when we try to adapt the Bible to fit modern Western culture. In today's world, distractions have become a dangerous trend, even more so than the push to modernize the Bible to fit cultural norms. While some Christians are quick to resist efforts to soften the Bible's message, many of us find ourselves caught in the endless cycle of entertainment. The temptation to watch TV has grown, with streaming services making it easier than ever to lose hours in front of a screen. Smartphones now give us constant access to the internet, making it hard to go even a few minutes without checking them. Whether we're waiting in line or at a stoplight, our phones are always within reach. Adding to this, AI is becoming more prominent, offering new ways to escape reality and immerse ourselves in the virtual world. This trend of distraction is something we must approach with caution, as it can quietly lead us away from our spiritual focus. The danger here isn't immediately obvious, and that's what makes it so deceptive. On the surface, things like entertainment and technology don't seem harmful. Watching shows, using smartphones, or even exploring AI, none of these are sinful in themselves. We aren't called to burn our devices like the magic books in Ephesus. But the real threat lies in the distraction these things bring. Studies show that people around the world spend nearly seven hours a day staring at screens. That's a staggering amount of time, and even if it's all spent on harmless activities, it can lead us away from God. When we let ourselves be consumed by constant entertainment, we give evil an open door. The more time we spend distracted, the less time we have for God's word, prayer, and serving others. These distractions weaken our focus on the spiritual battles we face daily. Christians must be vigilant and recognize that these trends in distraction and entertainment are tools the enemy uses to pull us away from our true purpose. Be cautious of the trend of affirmation culture. Though self-care and positive self-image might seem beneficial, they carry a hidden danger. This trend shifts our focus from the Creator to the creation, glorifying ourselves instead of God. The phrase, you are enough, may sound encouraging, but it stands against the truth of the gospel. Without Jesus, we are far from enough. Left to our own weaknesses and sinful tendencies, we remain separated from God, vulnerable to evil. This dangerous focusing on self over God is not new. It traces back to the Garden of Eden, where Satan, the deceiver, first twisted the truth. He led Eve to believe that God's provision was insufficient, convincing her that she could be like God. She gazed upon the forbidden fruit, drawn by its allure, and chose to disobey God. Eve turned her eyes from the Creator to the creation, giving in to her desires and ignoring God's command. This act of rebellion was the beginning of mankind's fall into sin, and Satan continues to use this evil tactic today. He whispers lies that glorify the self, luring us into the same trap of pride and rebellion against God. As we look around, the danger of self-exaltation is clear. We see it when church leaders fall into disgrace, trading their sacred duty for worldly desires, leading others astray by placing trust in men instead of God. But this warning is for all of us. When we choose fleeting pleasures over holiness or seek satisfaction over sanctification, we fall into the same trap. These are Satan's subtle deceptions, leading us away from righteousness. We must remain vigilant, resisting the urge to elevate ourselves above our Creator. Let us turn fully to God, for in Him alone is true strength and salvation.